In this video, I'm going to try to help you answer the question, are you old enough to try historical wargaming? Most wargamers don't start with historicals, historical games. Uh, most of us have a tendency to start with games that are generally either sci-fi or fantasy. When you're a younger person, you generally kind of gravitate towards those things. Now, there are obviously exceptions to the rule. There are 12-year-olds who are absolutely fascinated by World War II and they love that kind of stuff. Or they, maybe you got a 13-year-old girl who's completely enamored by the whole history of Vietnam, you know, whatever. But for the most part, those of us who started wargaming younger, maybe even not that young, most of us probably started in something science fiction based or potentially something fantasy based. But either way, it was fantastical and not historical. When I was younger, I would uh, see those guys at conventions who'd be playing historical games. And it would usually be a, a lot of older, gray, bearded men. And they would be playing some sort of ancients or Napoleonics or American Civil War. And they had a lot of lead figures, hundreds of them on a battlefield. And they'd be talking and they'd be moving in ranks and doing all that stuff. And that was always, as I was younger, generally kind of like, nah, I'm not that, that's not for me. I'm not interested. And I would go play other stuff. When I would go to Gen Con back when it was still in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, there would be these humongous naval battles that would happen. It would go over the course of all four days at Gen Con. They would be on, a f on the floor in a humongous space, 50 by 100 feet. They would block it off with chairs and tables and pieces of you know, rope and things like that so you didn't accidentally step on a naval formation because they were very small boats. You're talking about a battleship that's maybe three inches long. And these guys would play all weekend, all week, all four days long, and you get these humongous battles. And I was like, it was fascinating to kind of watch for a couple of minutes, but I'm like, I'm not going to do that all day. But at some point, all of us eventually start to get into something a little bit more historical. I don't know why it is. It's just at some point you get to an age where all of a sudden you're like, you know, World War II is kind of interesting or whatever your area might be, but you, you there's a switch. It's not really a switch, but it's it, it, it makes a click and all of a sudden you hit an age and you're just like, you know, I'm kind of interested in history now a little bit more than I was last year. And you start to think about it in terms of gaming. But you may look at some of these different games, some of these um, giant like American Civil War games, Napoleonic games, ancients and things like that, and just be like, I don't know if that's for me. But there's a good couple of transition games, the games that can get you from, you know, spacemen and elves and dwarves into more actual historicals. I'm going to tell you about like probably three of them, roughly, maybe four, that I can think of right now off the top of my head. For me, my first foray into historicals was Flames of War. And it was partially because I became interested in World War II and I became very interested for some reason in tanks. I really love the M4A1 Sherman. Like that is to me the quintessential tank. When I think of a tank, I think of the M4A1 with the rounded cast hull. The M4A3 with the welded kind of more triangular hull. I mean, it's fine. You know, I like it. It's fine. But it's that M4A1. That's what I think of. So I bought a bunch of those and I started playing with some friends who were playing in Germans and this and that and the other thing. And that's a game, it's 15 millimeter in scale, which means that your guys are about half the height of a normal, you know, like Space Marine or Imperial Guardsman or 28 millimeter. They're about half the size. But you don't play them individually and move each tiny little person around. You move them around on bases that are a squad of five guys on a base that's maybe, I don't know, two and a half by a one and a half. And then you also have your tanks, which are about, I don't know, maybe three inches long. And they're usually made out of, they used to be made more out of resin and metal, but they're becoming more and more plastic. And the thing that's interesting about World War II, there's two things. Number one is with Flames of War, there are technically three different eras you can play in, early war, mid war, and late war. There's a problem in that, in that like if you really dig late war and your friend really likes early war, you kind of can't play against each other. I mean, there's ways around it a little bit here and there, but it's difficult. So that's kind of a problem. But the other thing that's cool is that nobody owns copyright on World War II. So if you don't like this particular model from Battlefront, the company that makes Flames of War, you can go to another company and buy the exact same scale. It's just another, you know, Sherman or Stuart or whatever. Plastic Soldier Company is a big one. They make a lot of, as it turns out, plastic soldiers and also vehicles. And they do nice little kits. They really do. My uh, Stuarts are all Plastic Soldier Company, whereas my Shermans are still basically, for the most part, all um, Battlefront. 
And uh, they're great games. It's an interesting game, and you can go more tank heavy, more infantry heavy. You can kind of do different things. It's hard if you've been playing predominantly 28 millimeter because your terrain isn't going to really scale. It's, you know, buildings are the wrong size and things like that. And I'll kind of explain a little bit more about that in a sec. But it's interesting. You can paint guys a lot quicker because they're a lot smaller, so you don't have to get so detailed. It's, it's a cool system. And if you're kind of on the fence thinking about getting into some sort of historicals, I think it's a good one to get into. Another one that's very new that um, Battlefront has brought up is a new game called Team Yankee. This is also a tank battle game with some infantry, but it takes place, it's not exactly historical. It's what I would call alternate history. It takes place in 1985. It's based off of a novel by Harold uh, Coilman, Coilin, something like that. Um, anyway, it's it's a it's a alternate history Cold War turning hot. It's not World War III. Some people that I've read online said, oh, it's a thing about World War III. But to my mind, basically the storyline behind the book is a battle occurs between Soviets and NATO forces in Germany, uh, August 3rd, 2000, or 18, or 1985. And the battle goes on for about, I don't know, like nine, 10 days. It ends around the 11th or 12th. During that battle, Birmingham, Birmingham England gets nuked. Uh, in response, Minsk gets nuked, and then eventually the the, the war is, is kind of called off, which, you know, that's, that I wouldn't say that's a world war. You know, it's it's a skirmish. Granted, not so hot for the people in Birmingham or Minsk, but in general, the thing that's interesting about it is unlike Flames of War, where you've got early, you know, mid, and you've got late, this happened in the course of a fortnight. And so it's very specific, and you have these forces versus these forces, because it's a newer game, pretty much all the tanks that um, that they're making for it over at Battlefront, they're all plastic kits. They go together really well. They're very highly detailed. They're really nice to build. Um, some of the airplanes, from what I understand, are resin, but not too bad. You know, you, you don't run that many airplanes either, so they're not so hard to build. It, it's just, it's an interesting system, and if I knew some people around here that were interested in playing it, I might think about it. But um, the tanks are a very different. They're still the same scale, but they're very much bigger in comparison. You know... An Abrams tank, in comparison to a Sherman, they're the same scale, but they don't look the same scale because that Abrams is humongous in comparison. So it's an interesting thing, and it's still historical. It's just kind of alternate history. Nothing is, there's no, you know, Nazi zombies or laser weapons or any kind of stuff like that. It's not like weird World War. It's just we took the World War that didn't really happen, and we tried to give it a try, you know, around 1985. So that's kind of an interesting system you might want to look at as well if you're thinking about getting into historicals. Before I mentioned uh, the 15 millimeter scale, the much smaller scale in comparison to what we generally work with if we're going around 28 millimeter, there's a way to get around that, and that's a game called Bolt Action. Bolt Action is a cool game by um, Warlord Games, and also Osprey does some of the publishing, and it's 28 millimeter. You don't run as many, you generally in your army have about maybe 30 guys. So it's a big skirmish game. It's not a full blown army game, but it's not like I'm not gonna take six or eight, 10 guys. It's about 30 and then usually a tank. And the tanks in that game obviously are a good deal bigger because you know, again, you know, you're talking about 28 millimeter scale, but you've got tons of different options, you know, Axis, allies, a lot of the sub factions, this and that and the other thing. There's a lot of different things you can do in that game. And again, you can use a lot of the older terrain you might have for ruins and things like that. Just bring it in, you know. Granted, if it's super sci-fi looking or super fantasy, it might not work super well. But there's definitely some play you can do between those. Definitely trees and things like that. You can really bring those in and make your stuff look really nice. Uh, it's a it's an interesting system. One of the things that I think are the, the coolest about it is the activation system. It's not a I go, you go, or alternating back and forth, or anything like that. It's, it's, it's random. You have these chips that you put into a bag, like a dice bag, and you have a chip for each of your units. Not specific to the unit, but just you have 20 units, that means you have, or whatever, you know, and then your opponent does the same. And then at the beginning of each turn, you reach in, you pull out a chip. Okay, it's your color. Well, that means you get to move a unit. You can move whichever one you, one you want. And then you reach in there again. Oh, it's your opponent again. So you keep doing that back and forth. So you don't know if you're going to go first or second or third or fifth or whatever. But you do know that if your opponent gets a lot of them early on, you're going to get a bunch of them later on because you know how many are in the bag. So you've got a little bit of strategy that way, but you still have to plan ahead for not knowing when you're going to finally get some activations for your people. So I think that's a great activation system. I'd like to see more games use it. But if you're into World War II, but still want to put more detail and uh, 
and you know have guys that you can paint faces on and things like that, then you know you may want to look into something like bolt action. Uh, it's there's a bunch of you know online play things you can see a lot of bat reps you can check out for it too. Pretty much all of these I think we got a lot of that going on, but bolt action. I kind of wish I was in bolt action. We went with Flames of War, my local group, first, but I really wish sort of that we would have gone with bolt action because I think I would have enjoyed maybe some of the painting a little bit more. But um, both of them, World War II, and you can do a lot with them. Lastly, I'm just going to very quickly mention a game that I don't know a ton about, but I know it's getting more and more popular, and it's not related to World War II at all, and that's a game called Saga. Saga is basically ancients. It's Vikings and Visigoths and, you know, stuff like that. And again, because nobody has a copyright on Vikings and Visigoths, you can buy kits. Again, it's 28 millimeter size, but you can buy kits from plenty of different companies. Lots of companies make different uh, models for all the different eras of ancient battles. And again, it's kind of large skirmish, so you might have 20-ish to 30-ish guys on your side. But that's your entire army. And there's no vehicles, you know. You don't have to worry about tanks. I don't even think there's like catapults or anything along those lines. It's predominantly played in, you know, these these kind of battles that go together. And um, there's an interesting dice system. You kind of use special dice to some degree from what I remember. And there's charts and things like that. They've been, they've, it's gotten very popular since Fantasy went away. When Warhammer Fantasy went away, a lot of people who were like not liking Age of Sigmar, they, they moved over to this. It's still, I mean, it's obviously not the same, but it's still vaguely, let's say, medieval-ish. You know what I mean? It's swords and shields, which kind of works. There's just no magic. There's no dwarves and dragons and stuff like that. But it, you know, scratches that itch for a lot of people. And again, like I said, the models are inexpensive because there's a lot of competition. A lot of different companies out there making them. You can get them in plastic and get them in metal. But it's, um, it's again, it's an interesting game to me, and it's something that I, I would have not been interested in five years ago at all. Or five years ago at all. You hit, like I said, I, I hit a certain age, and then all of a sudden, now some of these historical games are, are, are becoming interesting to me. And that may happen to you as you get older, or it may have already happened to you. So I guess, what do you think about historicals? Do you just are they complete snoozeville, or have you been interested in them for a long time? Do you remember like? When all of a sudden you hit that birthday where all of a sudden like the light went off and you started becoming interested in historicals. I just pretty much mentioned uh, four historicals in this video that are good kind of gateways from, you know, your fantasy and your sci-fi into historicals. What other ones do you guys think of? You know, uh, put them in the comments. I'd love to see them. And it's always a good resource for the rest of the community. So, yeah, I... Um, I gotta say, even just after doing this video, talking about it, I'm thinking more and more about uh, historicals and uh, thinking about maybe getting back into Flames of War, maybe taking a look at uh, Team Yankee. But I think it, it, I don't know if it happens to everyone, but almost everyone at some point in their life gets old enough to the point where they're like, you know, things that happened in the past are interesting.